I'm thrilled to be at another Iowa home. My name is James Riggers. I am an engineer at Intel. I'm going to share our enthusiasm for Sickle and a vision for the quest that we are all on. About two years ago, five Intel engineers had a vision for a book to teach Sickle programming, and they asked me to join them. We were blessed with a lot of fantastic reviewers who gave us advice and feedback. The outcome is a solid book, definitely worth recommending to anyone interested in SQL programming. Data Parallel C++ is an open source project to add SQL to LLVM. It was initiated by Intel. It has had significant investments from Intel engineers and is very open to all contributors. DPC++ already supports Intel CPUs, or more broadly, x86 CPUs, uh, Intel GPUs, Intel FPGAs, uh, with the support that comes from Intel. And thanks to CodePlay, NVIDIA GPUs have solid support, and HipSQL can also combine to affect AMD GPU support. And there is some ARM activity already starting up. It's all very open source, so it's very open and transparent, and it is very LLVM oriented, which is the best place to be if you're a compiler. I considered calling this my top 10 reasons DPC++ was named DPC++, but it turns out there really are only two reasons, and they're complementary. First of all, the name Sickle was taken. Secondly, Data Parallel C++ is a name that perfectly describes the project. LLVM is the best place to support SQL, and we know that adding data parallelism support to C++ is the goal of SQL. In fact, Michael Wong, the SQL Working Group Chair, summed it up by saying, SQL 2020's primary goal is to achieve closer convergence with ISO C++, furthering our work to bring parallel heterogeneous programming to modern C++ through open standards. So, what better name for an LLVM implementation than Data Parallel C++? Many users find comfort in the emphasis on C++, and the goal of DPC++ is to bring full SQL into LLVM. So let me answer a question before I continue. What the heck is an XPU? I use XPU to mean star dot star processing units. For instance, CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs, DSPs, ASICs. Now, they don't all have to end in PU for processing unit. In fact, most of those are taken. So we can expand the namespace a little and consider FPGAs and DSPs and ASICs to be part of my XPU world. So, okay, so now we know what an XPU means when I say it. Let's return to talking about our shared quest to make heterogeneous programming ubiquitous. At the heart of heterogeneous programming is XPU programming. I will offer up three critical tests for seeing if we are really free to program XPUs. Of course, I mean free as in freedom, not as in free beer. Number one, are we free to use whatever XPU we choose, you know, regardless of the type or the vendor? Number two, regardless of my choice, can I consistently get value out of an XPU? Do I get reasonable performance? Again, regardless of type or vendor. And number three, can my coding choices be made with confidence? Is my code maintainable? Now, this is not a call for solving this magically out of the box. It's important to note that we must expect and plan for some XPU-specific coding and tuning. That should be expected. We're not expecting the unobtainable, universal, right ones run everywhere. Sickle is aligned with this vision. One API is aligned with this vision. The more, the merrier, I say. Realizing this vision can use all the help it can get. The vision we share is to have a cross-architecture, cross-vendor software portability while providing the performance we need. We cannot have too many people touting this vision. No matter what devices and accelerators our system may have, no matter what language and libraries each of these devices are programmed using, 
middleware or frameworks to support the actual applications and workloads. One API is bridging, abstracting, and bringing all these devices to a common ground. One API is an open specification. The open specification of one API does define a low-level abstraction layer inside the software stack with complete transparency on what it takes to implement one API. Intel has put huge amounts of software into open source to implement one API. These are product quality implementations in open source, very substantial. And Intel builds and validates versions of these implementations specifically in support of Intel hardware. I want to tell you about Intel's implementation of One API. One API uses a hardware abstraction layer that aims to simplify everything built on top in support of One API. This spans basic functionality such as device discovery, memory allocation, kernel execution, uh, things that tools need for profiling and debugging, system management concerns, including maintenance tasks and administration. The abstraction layer uses a number of technologies today, including OpenCL, to get the job done. Our vision is to keep refining this together to meet the needs of all XPUs. Languages matter a great deal. Top of the list, Sickle. It's the one that gives us control over XPUs and the programming of them. We are emphasizing an LLVM implementation known as Data Parallel C++. Continuing on the theme of open standards and specifications, we also strongly support OpenMP, MPI, C, Fortran, Python. They're all included in our vision, XPU vision. And hopefully, you know that we have a book about Sickle using DPC++. It is possible that libraries matter more than languages. But we can all agree that languages and libraries are the critical foundations of any software stack. Now, the optimized libraries cross various domains. For instance, OneDNN supports deep neural networks. OneMKL is a math kernel library. There's also a video processing library and many more. And there'll be more to come. The vision is that libraries are very key in our ability to span XPUs by exposing the same sets of APIs across a variety of XPUs, we give a portability and a familiarity that can help us all. Now, imagine frameworks sitting completely on top of one API libraries. They would effectively have XPUs built in. This is the future, and it really is wonderful for everyone for framework makers, hardware vendors, framework users. Stay tuned, I'm certain that this is a vision of the future. The Intel implementation of One API includes many additional tools that help with debug, analysis, performance tuning. The XPU vision really shines at this level because our shared vision for XPUs means that we can expect every tool to help us regardless of what XPU we are using. Sickle gives us single source programming. One API asks that we have a single tool capability when it comes to debugging or analysis or tuning. It's a very logical extension of the philosophy of the Sickle specification. If you can write code for Sickle to control and use XPUs, you should be able to debug, analyze, and tune them. You should have libraries for them as well. One API demands that we follow through. And Intel has invested heavily in moving all our tools to support this vision. This will not be the last time you hear me comment, but this really is a vision by software developers for software developers. Everyone here should be cheering on this vision. Yay! Consider FPGAs. In addition to supporting FPGAs with Sickle via the DPC++ compiler, we have also added Intel VTune profiler support. And developers love it. As we add device side libraries, we try to adopt popular APIs rather than reinvent them. Making every XPU offer a common look and feel to developers is a powerful thing. I have seen a lot of incredible things happening with customers where both longtime FPGA programmers 
and new to FPGA programmers are able to come together productively. I think Sickle will eventually be positioned as getting better performance than handwritten code. The reality is handwritten code will be cited as being more efficient, but handwritten code is hard to adjust and adapt. Sickle puts us close enough to that handwritten code performance that productivity and the ability to adapt and adjust our algorithms will yield better results in practice. This reality matters. This is the future of FPGA programming. The Intel implementation of One API includes many additional libraries, compilers, and analyzers. It's arranged in toolkits specific to application domains and can be downloaded in many ways or used remotely on the Intel Dev Cloud. Honestly, I kind of hate that there are so many toolkits. I just simply want to install all of them. So you might ask, why are there so many? Well, not everyone shares my enthusiasm for having everything, often because of space consumption, the time to download, and so forth. There really are a lot of tools here. But you know what comes as a basis of all the toolkits? You guessed it, Sickle. Sickle sits underneath all the toolkits. Intel has a lot riding on an Intel XE GPU design that we call Panavecchio. It will power an exascale machine. Now, Argonne's website says that this machine, named Aurora, will yield an exaflop double precision. That's 10 to the 18th. You may not know it, but I was one of the original designers of ASCII Red, the world's first teraflop machine. That's 10 to the 12th. In June of 1997, Intel's ASCII Red jumped to the top of the top 500 list, and it was the first one listed there that reached the teraflops. It appears Aurora is likely to be the second exaflop machine in the world, but first, second, third, fourth, it's really all magic to me. My hat's off to every exaflop machine. They are amazing accomplishments. I started with 10 to the eight or nine zeros, afterwards 10 to the eighth or ninth power, and then I helped ASCII Red get to 10 to the 12th. Now we're approaching 10 to the 18th. It's mind boggling. The run from 10 to the 12th to 10 to the 18th came in less than 25 years. I'm confident that XPUs are key to fueling the future growth. Where are we going to be in 25 years? It's simply mind boggling. No wonder I'm so convinced we must help software development survive in this XP world. In fact, we have to help it thrive. XPUs are the future of computing. Making them valuable to all programmers is essential. One API is a huge push to help the industry adopt XPUs openly and universally. Our vision goals for the future are highly aligned. Much of One API rests solidly on Sickle. Sickle is on our minds all the time. Okay, I will admit that getting a 100,000 plus person company to love Sickle, or any standard for that matter, should not be assumed to be a simple task. The heroes in my story recommended within Intel that Intel adopt Sickle, and they stood by the recommendation. They knew Sickle had strong foundations, and that attracted our heroes to Sickle. I'm very proud of them. Open wins, but someone has to stand up for open. I invite everyone who sees a way to ensure Sickle meets the needs of every XPU, roll up your sleeves, come help. The Sickle committee has been very open. There are very dedicated souls working on it. And of course, my heroes, people at Intel, who convinced Intel to stand behind it, are there as well. Now, these heroes that I appreciate so much, well, they're pretty humble. They heap praise on the entire Sickle committee. The whole committee deserves our thanks. Standards work is a lot harder than it looks, and their dedication really matters to all of us. Just like everyone here, we aim to continue to contribute to Sickle with an eye on helping Sickle contribute to C++. The best we can offer the C++ committee is our combined experiences using a well-considered standard. 
on many XPUs from many vendors. We will do that for Sickle, and I hope to see Sickle adopted into C++ over time. Now, together, we need to bring this world to our shared vision for XPUs. We have a lot of work ahead of us to get the world to join us. We're off to a great start. We are very serious about this at Intel. It's why I came out of semi-retirement to rejoin Intel. It is a vision by software developers for software developers. So I hope to at least make you smile when I say, I'm from Intel and I'm here to help. I'm not hard to find on the web, LinkedIn, blogs, Twitter, my email will be on the screen the rest of this video. Please reach out, please join us in this quest. You can also check out my blog on XPUs. One way to find it is via the QR code. It's my personal attempt at helping build interest in understanding and heterogeneous programming, and Sickle is at the core of that. I'm off to a modest start. I'm still warming up to a camera. Your feedback would be appreciated. Your ideas and help are welcome. Of course, I do wish we were together in person. I hope to see some of you at Supercomputing in November. I hope I've helped you get an understanding of Intel support of Sickle, our LLVM project known as DPC++, and our efforts called One API. I hope you see the shared vision that we have and you'll help us refine it and improve the world with it. Thank you for tuning in, and have a wonderful iWaffle and SimpleCon.